All right. Our bell ringer today. So identify these these uh, images. All right. So when you look at this image, what is this an image of? Poison ivy. All right. Poison ivy. What is this? A scorpion. What's this? Poison. What's this? Chemicals. Chemicals. What does all four of these pictures have in common? Poison. Poisonous. All right. They are all poisonous. They are all harmful to you at some point. All right. Now we're going to go on to our next slide that's going to begin our lesson. We're going to be talking about poison and all the bad, harmful things that go along with poison. Carrying transportation of the sick and injured. All right. All right, so we're going to be talking about emergency care and transportation of sick and injured people. All right. Introduction. Every day we come in contact with things that are potentially poison. Acute poison affects about 2 million people each year. When you hear the word acute, what do you think the word acute means? A very small amount. A very small amount. That is correct. But when it comes to acute poisoning, what do you think that is? Mm. Uh, around between maybe 400 to 500 people poisoned. Or well, it's a large quantity. So acute poisoning means it's one time, but a large amount. So... Let's think of some acute poisons that we may have in our house. Bleach. Somebody give me one. You say bleach? Okay. Uh, uh, rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol. Mm -hmm. What else? Hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide. Those are all are acute poison. Just you can take it and one lump some and it can it can poison you. Now we talk about chronic poison. It's more common in deaths of adults between uh, and, and have been a rise as, uh, as a result of drug abuse. So when you think about chronic poison, what, what we can think of? Uh, Percocetics, uh, Perdix, Oxycontin, Xanax, uh, uh, fentanyl. Okay. okay. Right now, right now in the world, there's an epidemic going on with fentanyl right now. A lot of people, it, is being, it, take, it takes a very small amount of fentanyl to kill you. It is being mixed with uh, all kinds of other drugs. It is. It is. I think uh, I was looking, reading a newspaper article like last week something. They found this strand of marijuana that they had laced with fentanyl. Yeah. They had kind of crossbreed the two. Uh, and the guy ended up dying in California. And they end up testing it, doing the toxicology over him, and uh, end up finding out that the marijuana that he had was laced with fentanyl. All right, toxicology. Toxicology is the study of toxic or poisonous substance. Poisons, any substance whose chemical, <clears throat> whose chemical action can damage the body structure and important and impair body function. You got toxins, a poisonous substance produced by bacteria animals or plants so we talk about what plant that we can say is a toxin poison ivy poison oak poison oak you got so many of them would you consider a scorpion a toxin yes what about a snake yeah because guess what that snake venom is poisonous not all snakes are toxins some snakes are good you got to think about it. you got chicken snakes, King snakes, garden snake, but you got you talk about the poisonous one. We talk about what? King Cotton. cobra, cotton mouth, uh, black coral, black mamba, rattlesnake, coral snake, all of those. All right, substance abuse. This is the misuse of any substance produce uh, produce a desired effect. So when we talk about substance abuse, that is a common thing in today's society. We see a lot of people overdosing on what? Fentanyl, Percocets, Oxycontin, who? Heroin. Heroin. That's that's been a, a one for since Vietnam War. 
You know, those guys went to Vietnam. They put them on all these drugs, come back. It's a pandemic. It was, it's an epidemic. Coke and crack. Why does the drugs like that not good for us or they can make it open? Why they keep making it? Oh, it's a, it's they a, get a lot of money out of it? So, so when you think about like heroin and those drugs, the, the government is allowed to let so much of that stuff in. So it's a way to kind of keep the checks and balances, the budgets on, on schedule. Are some drugs like Adderall, like sometimes Adderall is given for focusing and stuff like it that? It is. So sometimes sometime those drugs that are being abused, they're given, but people are taking them at a higher dosage than the recommended amount. So if you look at Percocet, your Percocet bottle may say, Take one tablet every six to eight hours with food, you know, and then somebody likes that effect of it that they get from that Percocet to say you have a surgery. They'll start abusing it. You know, and they get addicted to it because they, they love that feeling that they're getting. So it's not, it's not like, oh, well, I'm just going to abuse it. It's kind of, it kind of starts off like, okay, I like that feeling. Well, can I, I'm chasing. I'm chasing that high. All right. Chasing your first high, basically. Yeah, which you'll never get back. All right. Overdose is a toxic dose of a drug. A lot of people overdose on heroin. A lot of people overdose mm -hmm. on coke, crack. Oil. Yeah. Meth. You can you can overdose on anything. You can overdose on bleach. You use too much bleach. Guess what? You can overdose on. All right, next slide. These are some, <clears throat> some identify the patient and the poison. So you got opates, opioids, which is an opioid is more like heroin, methadone, oxycodone, and an opate is uh, morphine and codeine. And these are some of the si signs and symptoms that you'll see. You know, hyperventilation or respiratory arrest, pinpoint pupils, Sedation or coma, hypotension. And then it just this goes on. I'm talking about you got sedative, sedative, uh, hypo, hypo narcotics, uh, diaphragm, diaphragm, sexy. Uh, let's see. Oh no, that one was said cobo, butyrol. I don't know. Uh, which one? I don't know that one. I ain't gonna lie to you. But it's, it's like all the drugs that, that people can possibly overdose from. You can identify it. You can say hypertension. You got uh, dilated pupils. Your appearance can change. Seizure. You know what you say? Your appearance can change. You said dilated pupils. Mm -hmm. your, your appearance can change. Some drugs do make you age. When you can tell a person to oh, when they on drugs, they may be used to seeing them being a healthy, you know, their skin, it affects the skin and all that stuff. They could. It don't have, it don't it have to be years. years. It could be months. It be weeks. It just depends on what the drug is. Like meth, like meth is one of those drugs you probably can take, you know, a couple months. And you start seeing the transformation. Meth, and heroin, meth, heroin, and crack are the main three that actually makes a different difference in your looks. Your physical structure. Yep. Where do they get their names from? How do you use drugs? I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe no. you do a every, because everything is so everything is chemical based. So you're talking about everything may have some form of Tylenol in it, some type of Hydro something, hydrochloric, hydro, hydro, you know, magnesium sulfate. It's all kind of stuff that they put into these drugs, and so the name, the names just come so with. So they it. all got different types of substances. Yeah, it's all, it's all different substances, yes. and they all they all offer a different a different variation of a high. All right. So identify the patient. And the poison, if possible, ask the patient. This is somebody over is overdosing. What did you take? When did you take it? Or, or become exposed to it? 
How much of it did you ingest? Did you have anything to eat or drink before, uh, before or after you took it? Has an antidote been given since ingestion? And how much do you weigh? Those are all questions you would ask somebody that may potentially be in a situation of overdose. I, I want to say how much do you weigh would be on a count of how much you have taken, how many mm -hmm. milligrams, because you ain't supposed to take over your body amount. Your mass body weight. Correct. All right. Try to determine the nature of poison. Look around the immediate area for clues. You're going to take any suspicious material. Why is it important for you to look around the yeah. area and to take anything that you see? Evidence. And plus, it could be exposed to the person who's living around. So. Yeah, it, it could get exposed to kids. or. So, so just think about this. You're an you're, you're EM, EMT. You pull up on a scene for an overdose. What would, why would you look around? To find if they had anything taken, if they threw anything out, to find out what they've taken, and so other people wouldn't come across it and try to use it again. And also, you can find it, you can find those things to be helpful to you because there may be an offset, something that we can give them to offset their drug and their reaction that they're having. So, so basically like an antidote. Yeah, there's an antidote. Oh, uh, there is an antidote for heroin and stuff. I, I forgot what it was called. Methadone? Yeah. Oh, uh, also with heroin and stuff, there's there's upper and downers. If an uh, upper and a downer is mixed, it becomes poison and it kills you immediately. Becomes a hybrid and then automatically kills you. Oh, this is another one. Why is it important to look at containers? Mm -hmm. To see if there are any leftover, basically any leftover crumbs from what they had. A residue from what, what they, when they took the, uh, so let's just say maybe a pill. Let's say it may, it may take three Percocet 10s. You know, we might got 100 and, 120 in the bottle. But they take three of them, you know, the, the effect of it. They could be up in the clouds. And you don't want anybody else to get a hold to it, right? Yeah. All right. All right. Treatment depends on how the poison got into the patient's body. Uh, one of the main ones would what be injection. One? Injection would be for what? Uh, heroin. Heroin, uh, crack, and uh, hmm. Fentanyl and uh, other types like that. All right. What about inhalations? Uh, Coke. Bleach. What else? She said bleach. It's a drug. Coke. You're right. You inhale bleach, right? Any, any kind of chemical. Inhalation is anything that you can inhale through your nose. Glue. Glue. You think about that. Those are all poison. Because guess what? On the back of them, they say you have keep it from the children. Yep. This is not safe for children. Um, yeah, um, car smoke. The who? Car, car smoke. smoke. Car smoke. Okay. Like whenever you're in a uh, garage and you have your car on the whole Oh, time. yes, yes. The fumes from the, uh, the carbon dioxide. And then around for like the stove, like, you know how some people like when it's cold, yeah, like they'll um, turn the stove on. Mm hmm. Like, yeah, it it can you let the stove run, that's, that's the carbon dioxide. That's bad. Yeah. yeah you can yeah. Especially if your house is powered by gas. Yeah. You blow up your house. So, wow. people that work at a plant, that work at the lumber yard, that works at IP, which one do you think they most coming? coming Inhalation. Uh, Inhalation. Uh, or George. Now, is it acute or is it chronic? Probably chronic. Because it's a series It's a series that's happened month after month, yep. day after day. It's a routine. Yep. Uh, absorption can basically be with any type of drug because the residue from it could uh, affect your skin by going through it, getting your blood, and boom. I know a lot of y'all see, y'all saw those drug cartel movies and stuff like that, right? Yep. When they're dealing with cocaine, what they have on? Mm, gloves. Do they have clothes on? 
Like, most of them are naked. You talking about like most police? Because if it gets in your clothes, it's gonna get into yeah, your clothes. Yeah, like um, like um, like that crack and stuff. Like it can, it can get in your system just by you touching. Yeah, you know, that, that's why one of those guys when they be cooking crack. And <laughs> that's why. That that's why officers be wearing gloves and stuff whenever they're starting yeah. to Is And just hmm. Is marijuana poisonous? No. If no. you if you use too much of it, and if it's laced with a certain type of huh? drugs. How much is too much? I don't know. What about the man? How, how, how much is too what much? When you talking about the mojo? Yeah, because it's what? It's man-made. Well, <laughs> but, but where's it made at? Wait. Like mojo? No, it's not made in the kitchen. People, people make it. It's a made, science what? They're basically made in labs. Who made labs? Experiments. But I'm saying, where where did they make it in a in a labs. science what? Labs. It's in a lab. Drug labs, all that. Drug lab. Labs. So you don't know what chemicals they have sprayed that stuff with, because most of that most of that mojo stuff is, is like potpourri. You know, like how your mama put the little potpourri in a pot and what put, is potpourri? It's like an air freshener. Oh. I wish my mama put parsley flakes can kill you too. Cause they got a they got a lab at um and they shoot when they be making like stuff that like drugs. Yeah, they're they're even working at LSU for um cures and stuff like a cure for cancer. All right, so these are uh, this inhalation. You, you smell the rubbing cream. Most people smell like Vicks and all that stuff. Absorption. All right, absorption yeah. right here. And ingestion. Your ingestion gonna be your drug, like your uh, prescription pills and injections. It's gonna be like this guy shooting up maybe heroin or or um, oxycodone. You know. It's a soft it, it can come in all kinds of forms. Fentanyl. This is kind of like all kinds of drugs. But this is how this is how most drugs enter your body. So we know it's going to either end up inhalation, uh, absorption, ingestion, or injection. Inhale poisons. Move the patient into a fresh air immediately. So this this is this is a way that we'll we'll treat them. If we pull up on the scene, we EMS. We're going to pull up. We're going to move the patient to somewhere with some fresh air is. The patient may require uh, supplement oxygen. If you uh, suspect the, uh, pers- the presence of a toxic gas called the hazmat team, all patients who have uh, inhaled poisons will require immediate transportation. So immediately they're going to get that person out of that area. Call a hazmat team. So if you think something, when 9 11 happened, and they came out with this anthrax, who did they call first? Hazmat. Hazmat team. Because it's a poison. All right. Some patients use inhaled <clears throat> poison to commit suicide in vehicles. Exhaust fumes contain high levels of carbon, di- carbon monoxide. Chemicals or detergents in a uh, tightly uh, sealed vehicle can create a uh, gas chamber. Oh, sniffing gas can kill you too. Mm-hmm. It kills your brain cells, make you date, uh, make your brain dead. But you see, what we use this every day in our house. If you watch this, yep. you see, like just the everyday products that you use in your home could be a poison. What about toothpaste? No. Oh, <laughs> oh, mouthwash. Oh, yeah, no, Listerine. Yeah. All right. When you open the door, you may be overwhelmed. You may be over, overcome as well. Contact hazard material uh, responders and have them uh, come remove the victim. So sometimes you may walk into a situation and you may not be able to get them out, but you just. We tell them who you need to call. Has a material uh, thing or has met. Absorb and surface con- contact with poison can affect the patients in many ways. Skin, mucous membrane, eye damage, chemical burn, rashes, systematic effects. All right, when we think about the skin, Mucous membrane and eye damage. For, uh, so basically, four out of ten, four out of ten drugs can basically completely mess up your life. They make you immobile. 
So, I actually know somebody that suffered from a chemical bomb. So when I was in high school, we uh, we were in physics class. No, I'm sorry, we were in chemistry class. And so we had to do what they call the lithium test. So that way you mix all these things together and you find out maybe like bromine, uh, hydrochloric acid. Uh, basically, basically just, doing chemistry. Yeah, and, uh, we, we're doing all chemical experiments. The dude was doing all the stuff and uh, he spilled it. In. No, it was a young lady. Oh. She actually spilled uh, hydrochloric acid on her face. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And it, she had a chemical bar. I got a question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my little cousin poured bleach on her little sister yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. And it got her eye. Can't that make you blind? Yes. It can. It can. Think about this. What else can you get? Or like anything that damages the skin, mm -hmm. that can damage the eyes. Needles, what alcohol. Yeah, something natural. Uh, some natural that we all see outside. Sun. Sun. You can give you skin cancer. You can skin cancer. You can give you sunburn. It can give you a, a rash. Look at it too long. You can make you blind. You can. Because how bright it is. Distinguish between contact burn. <laughs> And contact exhaustion. Most of most of these, the skin and mucous membrane is going to be through skin contact. So that's contacting with the burn. So it's going to happen from the sun. The sun. You go to the beach. You're hanging out at the beach, laid out. And you put no suntan lotion on. Extreme sunburns. Extreme sunburn. I've been sunburned before. I had to. Uh, anybody can be sunburned. So. Don't let people tell you that only white folk can get sunburned. That's not true. I, I've been sunburned before, and it wasn't pretty. It, it, it's just so bad. Did you scratch it? No, I couldn't scratch it. I wanted to scratch it, but I couldn't. It's like burn 10 pounds of <laughs> Yeah. And then you go take a shower, and it's like, why is my skin on fire? <laughs> uh, what, what you're supposed to do whenever you have a... Um, some some you're supposed to get in like a cup of warm water to suck out all the heat. Mm -hmm. And after that, put all. Uh, I'm saying somebody talk about like with an oatmeal. They got like some oatmeal remedy. You can uh, take a bath and then bath in oatmeal. And it's supposed to help. Yeah. Uh, a, a, after you get out of the sub, you're supposed to go out of. Out of Yeah. All right. Absorb and surface contact poison. Signs and symptoms include. A history of exposure, liquid or powder on uh, the patient's skin, burns, itching, irritation, redness of skin, odors of the substance. Oh, um, can you can you get a contact burn from icy hot? Yes, Ben gay. You can. No, no. I just heard you shook your head. You shook your head. He like. Yeah. You probably can because yeah. I mean, like, it's icy hot. Like, your skin could probably possibly get too hot and then it, you just like start bubbling up like a if burn. If you put too much icy hot on, that's when you're get burned because yeah. the heat won't go down until the uh, cooling effect kicks in. So, See, I was right. So they had some stuff when I was in school called atomic bomb. Like, this stuff it was like a it was it was a it was like icy hot, but it was like a gel and it was orange. And so I decided one day that my knee was hurting. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna put some atomic bomb on and go practice. Why did I do that? Made it worse. I started sweating. It started getting hotter and hotter. So I, I get this right idea. Well, let's put some cold water on. Guess what? Right. Wrong thing to do. That cold, that cold water intensified the heat. So I was like, Oh, I did what I'm about to do. I had to go take a shower. Like with some just some unscented soap and like <laughs> wash the area where I had put the icy hot at. I'm like, I thought I was on fire. So don't try that at home. Please don't try it because I'm, I'm not going to help you. Uh, I'm, I might <laughs> do some dope stuff at home, but I want to do that. All right. Emergency treatment. Avoid contaminate, contaminating yourself or others. Remove substance as rapidly as possible. Remove all con uh, contaminated clothing. 
You're gonna flush, uh, flush and wash the skin. If dry powder has uh, spilled, brush off and uh, brush off and flood and flood with water for about fifteen to twenty minutes. Then wash with soap and water. If liquids has spilled, flood for another fifteen to twenty minutes. What this look like? That could be peroxide, uh, uh, spray heat in your eyes, or some. Alcohol. Know, alcohol. It can be alcohol. Or that be that could be caused by a drug overdose. Could be. How because how bloodshot his eyes are, the heroin or anything going through his system could have. Made him overdose, and whatever happened could have busted something in his eyes or something, too. Absorbed and surface contact. So this could be, just say, he was cleaning, cleaning something, got some bleach on him, got some peroxide in his eye. So that's why they tell you don't put all those things around your eyes because that's what you can accidentally, oh no, I'm squirting my eye. I've done it. Same here. A lot of people have done it. All right. So, wait. So, bleaching in your eyes, it's like, it's like a 50 50 chance. It can damage your eyes. Is the chance of it damaging, damaging your eye higher than the chance of it not? No. <laughs> in an industrial setting, how many of y'all take? Like NCR, NCCR core, any type of welding, I take, anything like I, that. I take welding too, and uh, what about OSHA? Uh, I, I done my OSHA last year and everything. Uh, so, what's the first thing they tell you? Wear safety glasses, a helmet, gloves. Why they tell Why they tell you to wear safety glasses? That way, if you're grinding metal, spark metal, don't get in your eyes. Uh, what if you, What if you What if you're doing something with chemicals? Mm -hmm. That way, no, that way, no one will splash in your eyes. Safe. You supposed to have a safety shower. I supposed to have like a wash station. Uh, I wash station. So in case you get something in your eye, wash it up. Safety shower. Specific protocols may be available. Hazmat team should be available to assist you. Ensure that. Ensure, ensure that you and your team and, and the patients are uh, thoroughly uh, decontaminated, obtain material safety data sheets. So we definitely want to make sure we keep a lot of good records. What if this wasted my eye? What do you think this would do? Maybe it'll probably burn your eye. That's like a murder. Let's see what it says. Keep out of reach of children. Warning. Eye irritation, see back panel for additional precautions. Since the hidden corner, I'm sure what we at. Here we go. Keep away from eyes. First aid for eye contact, flush with water for 15 minutes. If the irritated, if the irritation persists, Prompt emergency, prompt medical uh, attention after swallowing. Give one to two glasses of water and call physician. Poison control or emergency room uh, for immediate. So, if you drink this, if you spray it in your eye, whatever, I just told you keep it away from your eye. So, but if you by by, have, by chance. For shots to spray it in her eye, what are we gonna do? We're gonna wash our eye for how many minutes? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Well, Chloe say, I'm a little thirsty. Ain't no water in here. I'm gonna drink this Gatorade. You like Gatorade, right? Yeah. What flavor? What flavor that look like? The lemon lime. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So Chloe say, I'm thirsty. And she said, well, I'm going to drink this. I'm going to drink this Gatorade. It's not in this bottle, but it's in a Poway bottle like yours. 
Oh, <laughs> you make me scared to jerk it in the man. I'm just saying, it can happen to you like that. Somebody, somebody, look, somebody can get upset with you and say, I'm sick of, I'm sick of Taisha. She out, she don't do nothing but complain. I'm just sick of it. Guess what? I know she like to ask me to drink. Ask me for drinks. Guess what? They take a little bit of this and pour it in your power. You never know. Coach, did you know that you can take a whole pack of cigarettes, boil it, and poison somebody? No, I'm losing. I'm going to try. Um, my grandmother. Oh, no. But yeah, all the toxins in the cigarettes, it will soak out from the from it boiling, and you can put it in like somebody's tea or something. Because the color of it will turn to a tea brown. Wow. Let's do this. Ingested poison. About 80% of poison is by mouth. That's crazy. So that means not, like, it's not inhaling. It's eating. 80%. Because what we said, what we said, the common common thing that we, we take. If we ain't feeling well, what are we gonna say? I need to take some what? Medicine. I need to take some medicine. So guess what? Guess what? Oh, I woke up this morning, my shoulder hurt, my neck hurt. I'm gonna take pain pills. Well, guess what? It still hurt. Do you take more? I don't know. Do you do you take more? I'm just saying. For somebody for somebody to to for eighty percent or this to be by mouth, guess what? They take more than the recommended amount. Think about it. Some people have high pain tolerance. Like my pain tolerance is like up here. Because you used to play football. Like, it's just it's just I can I can I can take some pain and it's just gonna take a lot of drugs to knock that pain out. You gonna get addicted. That's a possibility. You could uh, get addicted. What I do whenever I have headaches, uh, I take two ibuprofen just in case the first one doesn't work. I got a question. Go ahead. Can you like come back and laugh through overdose if somebody gives you CPR? Yes. Mm-hmm. There is a. What if you put change. water in their mouth? You're not supposed, You're supposed to put nothing in their mouth. They're going to vomit. They're going to vomit. You can't give them food or nothing. You're going to drown them. Mama said that you're supposed to do four compressions, not five. You're going to bust them up. Five compressions. Five. You got to do, you gotta do 30 compressions. Now let's talk about sets. Not for CPR, you're talking about overdose. overdose. <laughs> the usual. That's again <laughs> in children and uh, deliberate in adults. So, children, they accidentally do it. Think about it. Mommy got these pills laying up here. I, I think it's some candy that she's taking, not knowing what it is. And they take it, and then next thing you know, they, they die. But they saying this is deliberate with adults. Yeah. Hey, I'm, have enough come adults come make their own choices. Hey, I'm sick of living. What if older people are passing in everybody? Sick of living. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of just tired of uh, frustration. I'm tired of that. My, my bills ain't getting paid on time. They about to come take everything from me. Guess what? Like a rock bottom, get out. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy exit. Rock, right? uh, rock bottom escape. Yeah. Signs and symptoms. They vary. Types of poison, age of patient, and the time that has passed since ingested. Signs and symptoms that may include burns around the mouth, gastrointestinal pain, vomiting, cardiac. Cardiac uh, dysrhythmism, rhythm, cardi- cardiac and seizures or seizures. So you have a heart attack, you have seizures, vomiting. So you see, you walk in the house, your siblings throwing up. They say, "Hey, I just took two Percocet. I just took two Percocet." My stomach hurt. Uh, I think the limit on per six is four. You ain't supposed to take more than four a day. Yeah, four a day. So you can take, you can take. I'm talking about they taking two at a time. Yeah, six out. How many? 
Five what? Oh, they, they said they self up for this. They is. They really is. They said they self. Right there in my face, like they, like a omen or something. I, I know someone that took ten Xanax in one day. Look, you gonna fall oh, yeah. you know, you, It's gonna show around the mouth. That's what they gonna, or they mouth gonna become real dry. Yeah, yeah, like they're they're not, they're I need something to drink, and then the white chocolate get around their mouth. Oh my god! Yeah. I've seen a lot of abusers then. Now see, now if they having a seizure, the white form will come out their mouth also. The white foam will come out their mouth and uh, their heads will come roll in the back yeah. of their head. It, it depends on what type of seizures they're having, though. Yep. All right. Treat, and, uh, treat signs and symptoms and notify the uh, poison center if the me if the medical control comes up. Poison center and medical control. Consider if there is un unabsorbed uh, poison in the uh, gastrointestinal tract. So basically, gastrointestinal tract is the lining of the stomach. Now, if you take, if you abuse Percocet, it's gonna damage the lining of your stomach. So your, so your stomach is gonna be lopsided. No, no, it's gonna tear it up. It's gonna, it's, so you have, you have a coating on, on the inside of your stomach, and that coating is to protect harmful things from going, going through and tearing the lining of your stomach. Then you develop ulcers and stuff like that. So it'll destroy that, uh, that, that gastrointestinal tract. Whether you can be safely prevented, uh, safely present the, prevent the absorption. What's this look like? Blue? The Asta? <laughs> Asta? I dropped. Activate charcoal suspension. About fifty gram of active. That's charcoal. something you'll use if you're having an old overdose on uh, hair and stuff. It 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 it's a downer. Like whenever you're hot, like you're hot up. Where do like people? Down. I I like people take this. Uh, yeah, they're not sure. Uh, a downer is what bait. Is what makes you sad or some some and a uh, activate charcoal and a upper basically makes you happy, up and going, energetic. Oh, I know. So right. Exposure by injection yeah, too. Drug abuse. Event. 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 Hold on. Event num limitations by insect and reptile. Venomation. Yeah, venomation. So who are you gonna get the venomation from? Mm -hmm. Snakes, I believe. Snakes. Uh, Insects are worms. Snakes, scorpions, bees. Frog. Worm poisonous. That's an insect. Ain't it? Usually it's absorb quickly into the body. Uh, it's an insect. A frog is an insect. Amphibian. But it's an insect. But a frog is no, not poisonous. It's an insect, though. Mm, so there's certain frogs that are poisonous. They, they have some poisonous frogs, but True. like the common frogs that we see out here, yeah, like they're not poisonous. Are some worms poisonous? Who? Are some worms poisonous? I ain't never heard of no poisonous worm. I have. I'm not saying it ain't, it's not one. I'll just say yeah. there, There's three That's types of, uh, there's three breeds of salamander. Two of them are uh, poisonous. Mm -hmm. Everything got some type of poison. Yellow. All right, signs and symptoms may include weakness, dizziness, fever, chills, unresponsive, and extractability. So, we talk about a snake bite, we talk bee sting. about a bee sting, scorpion sting. We talk about scorpion um, bite, you know, you scorpion. step on a scorpion, you walk, you walk through the desert. I don't know what reason, but <laughs> well, say you're on a trip and you walk into the desert and you step over the scorpion. How fast can it get into your bloodstream? Zero seconds. So if this gets into your bloodstream, you got to react quickly. 
If you get bit by a cotton mouth snake, you gotta react quickly. Cotton mouth snake. Mm-hmm. What is that? It's a poisonous snake. I've never heard of that. All right. Monitor the airway. Provide high flow of oxygen. Be alert for nasal and vomiting. I mean, for nausea and vomiting. And transport promptly. Remove rings, watches, bracelets from the area around the injection, the injected site if swelling occurs. So somebody overdose on heroin, some somebody overdose on oxycotton. Just these are things that you need to do to make sure we can get them safe. So go to the next one. Scene and size up. Take the standard precaution and look for clues that indicate that the sub substance involved. Is there an odor in the room? Is the scene safe? Are the uh, medication bottles laying around? Are there medication bottles laying around? Is there medication missing to indicate an overdose? Are alcoholic beverages containers uh, present? Are syringes and other uh, drug paraphernalia? Is there uh, suspicious odors that may indicate that the presence of drug of a drug laboratory? Some drugs will actually turn people to cannibalism. I'm gonna tell you this. That was a meth lab, I think, in Folsom that blew up. The people had been smelling like this harsh smell. And the people were back there cooking meth and it blew up. F lab explosion. Yeah. So like did the people What are syringe people that people if you go to the scene and you find syringes, what what you what you what you think those people are using? Heroin. I see those things all around like the stain, area. Bro. I mean walking anywhere, I see them around the streets everywhere. Well, if somebody commits suicide, you probably gonna see some Alcoholic containers, you're gonna see some pill containers. The most common way of suicide is uh basically hanging yourself or a drug overdose. I was just about to say that. Yep. 